Well, everyone, it's Mormons to downtown Remo, and you're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Tuesday, December 22nd, 2020, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello, that's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O, on Twitter at the Entertainment Report, or on Instagram at the Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Peter Jackson is giving a glimpse of his Beatles documentary, The Beatles Get Back. The 59-year-old writer, director, and producer released a montage from the film, which explores the making of the Beatles album Let It Be on Sunday. In the sneak peek, Jackson gives an update on the project and shares footage of the Beatles rehearsing and recording. Jackson says this film is due to be finished around about now, but like the rest of the world, has been affected by the COVID pandemic. And so the only good thing, really, is that we are editing the movie in New Zealand, and now that our country has largely stamped out the virus, we're able to come back into the cutting room and carry on with the editing that we're doing. Jackson and his team have access to 56 hours of never-before-seen footage of the Beatles. He says, I would say we're about halfway through the edit now because... You've been so patient, and the film has been delayed until 2021. We thought it was a good time to give you a little sneaky preview of what we've been working on and the sort of vibe and the energy that the film is going to have. Jackson says the preview is a montage of moments from the 56 hours of footage with an official trailer for the film to come in 2021. He says hopefully it'll put a smile on your face in these rather bleak times that we're in. Jackson is directing the film with the cooperation of Paul McCartney, Ringo Starr, Yoko Ono for the late John Lennon, and Olivia Harrison in place for the late George Harrison. Disney will release The Beatles Get Back in August 2021. Jackson is known for directing The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit movies. Bonham, Pharrell Williams, Halsley, and more have joined the voice cast for Universal Illuminations Entertainment's upcoming animated sequel, Sing 2. Alicia Wright, Bobby Cannavale, uh, Chelsea Peretti, and Eric Andre have also been tapped for the film, which will hit in theaters on December 22, 2021. Matthew McConaughey, Reese Witherspoon, Scarlett Johansson, Tori Carey, uh, Taron Egerton, and Nick Kroll are returning to reprise their voice roles. McConaughey and Witherspoon teased on Twitter Sunday that news regarding Sing 2 was coming. The first film was released in 2016 and was centered around talking animals who hold a singing competition in order to save a theater. Sing 2 will follow Koala Buster Moon and his friends as they attempt to perform at the prestigious Crystal Tower Theater. The group must convince reclusive lion and rock legend Clay Calloway, played by Bono, to perform again following the death of his wife in order to be allowed on stage by the theater's owner, Wolf Jimmy Crystal, played by Cannavale. Williams will, will voice elephant ice cream truck owner Alfonso, who uh, elephant Mina has eyes on. Halsey will portray Jimmy Crystal's teenage daughter, Porsche, with Wright as a streetwise feline dancer. Andre as a self-important yak and Peretti as Jimmy Crystal's canine assistant. Garth Jenkins is writing and directing the film, which is produced by Illumination founder Chris Melodandre and Janet Haley. Netflix is giving a first glimpse of the new film The White Tiger. The streaming service shared a trailer for the movie Monday featuring Adrash Gaurav, Priyanka Chopra, and Raj Kumar Ro. The White Tiger is based on the Avravind Adiga's novel of the same name. The film explores India's class struggles through the eyes of Balram Hawali, played by Gurav, a young man born into poverty. In the preview, Balram becomes the driver for a wealthy couple, Ashok, played by Rao, and Pinky, played by Chopra, in Delhi. After the couple betrayed him, Balram breaks free from his servitude and becomes the White Tiger. He says, they had plans, I had plans too. I would have to become the creature that gets born only once every generation. Netflix previously released a teaser trailer for the film that shows Balram's perspective begins to change after Pinky questions what he truly wants in life. The White Tiger is directed by Raman Barani, known for the film's plastic bag, Chop Shop, and the HBO's adaptation of Fahrenheit 451. Ava Durbinay serves as the executive producer. The film opens in selected theaters this month before premiering January 22nd on Netflix. 
Miles Teller hopes that his film Top Gun Maverick will help give a voice to, serve, to those who serve in the military. The 33 year old actor discusses his role in the upcoming Top Gun sequel in the January issue of Men's Health magazine. Teller plays Bradley Rooster Bradshaw, the son of the late Nick Goose Bradshaw, in the new movie. Goose was portrayed by Anthony Edwards in the original Top Gun, which opened in theaters in 1986. Top Gun Maverick co-stars Tom Cruise will have her prize his role as Pete Mariv uh, Maverick Mitchell, Jennifer Connelly, John Hamm, Glenn Powell, Louis Pullman, Ed Harris, and Val Kilmer. In the Men's Health interview, Teller says he was initially hesitant to take on his role in the film. He says, I don't want this to come out the wrong way, but there was a part of me that didn't want uh, that didn't know if I wanted to be a part of something that could bring that so much attention and success to me. He added, everybody views success differently. For me, it didn't necessarily mean being a part of the biggest movie. Teller previously starred in the war drama, Thank You for Your Service, and has a grandfather, an uncle, and friends who serve in the military. Teller said these connections ultimately motivated him to accept the Top Gun Maverick role. He says, you want to give a voice to these guys in the wars that we fight now. Our military comes from very specific parts of the country and socioeconomic classes. We're losing that connection between civilians and military and our veterans. Paramount Pictures released a, t a teaser trailer for Top Gun Maverick in February that shows Maverick, played by Cruz, a U.S. Navy pilot, performing stunts in the sky. The Top Gun Maverick release was delayed in July due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The film will now open in theaters on July 2021. Teller is known for the films The Spectacular Now and Whiplash and for playing Peter Hayes in Divergent movies. Lionsgate has acquired the UK rights to the period drama Living Star and Bill Nighy, a remake of Akira Kurosawa's 1956 film Ikira. Nighy will play Williams, a veteran civil servant in, in London in 1952, who is caught in the bureaucracy of rebuilding England following World War II. Williams, as paper built, discovers that he has seven months to live and starts to search for meaning in his life. Oliver Hermanus is directing the film from a screenplay by Kazu Ishiguro. Stephen Woodley and Elizabeth Carlson of Number no. 9 Films are producing. Production is set to begin in the spring. The production come after Nine's Gate announced it would cut 15, 20 employees from its London office, said Monday, that films in the United Kingdom will continue to be a source and service locally by a team that includes senior acquisition and production executives Emma Berkowski and Marie Claire Benson, who oversee marketing and distribution. Lionsgate President of Acquisitions and Co-Productions, Jason Constantine, said in a statement, Lionsgate is continuing its long-standing commitment to acquiring the best of British cinema and bringing the highest caliber entertainment to UK audiences. We are thrilled for Lionsgate UK to be continuing our relationship with Stephen Woodley and Elizabeth Carlson on another outstanding film. We have a very strong and talented team in place, and I excited for uh, to work with Emma and Marie Claire to amplify and support British filmmaking voices throughout the region. Living is a perfect example of a story that we are so confident will resonate with the UK audiences, and we're thrilled and proud to be this film's home distributor. John Favreau, the creator, writer, and executive producer of The Mandalorian, confirmed on Good Morning America Monday that Season 3 of the Star Wars series will come after the book of Boba Fett. Favreau released the logo for the book of Boba Fett on GMA and detailed production schedules for the show on GMA. Favreau said, in reference to Lucasfilm's president, Kathleen Kennedy, so this is actually separate from The Mandalorian Season 3, but what we didn't say in that announcement is that the next show come up, Kathy said the next chapter and that's going to be the book of Boba Fett. And then we go into production right after that on season three of The Mandalorian. Kennedy recently announced multiple Star Wars productions for Disney Plus, but did not mention the book of Boba Fett that, so that fans could be surprised at the end of The Mandalorian season two, where the spinoff was announced, Favreau said. The book of Boba Fett will follow Fett, played by Demura Morrison, and his partner, Phoenix Shahad, played by Ming Nan Wen. The duo shoot up Jabba's palace during an end credits scene with Fett sitting on Jabba's throne at the end. Elliot Page says fans support 
has been the greatest gift since his coming out as a transgender. The 33-year-old actor shared a selfie and a message of thanks Sunday on Instagram after coming out as a transgender man this month. Photo shows Paige wearing glasses and a black hoodie while posing for the camera. Paige expressed his gratitude to the fans in the comments. He wrote, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Your love and support has been the greatest gift. Stay safe. Be there for each other. If you're able, support at Trans, uh, Trans Atlant and at Trans Life Life. Singer Janelle Monet and actresses Jennifer Gardner, Laura Lindley, and India Moore showed their support for Paige in the comments. Gardner wrote, major huge love to you, Elliot. Moore says, love you, SM. Paige said in a letter to fans December 1st that he is a transgender man who pronoun whose pronouns are he, him, or they, them. Yeah, the star says, I can't begin to express how remarkable it feels to finally love who I am enough to pursue my authentic, my authentic self. I will offer whatever support I can and continue to strive for a more loving and equal society. He also added, I love that I am a trans, and I love that I am queer, and the fact that I hold myself close and fully embrace who I am the more I dream, the more my heart grows, and the more I strive. Paige is known for starring in the 2007 film Juno. He played Vanya uh, Hargreaves in the Netflix series The Umbrella Academy, which was renewed for a third season in November. Netflix confirmed on December 1st that Paige's role in Umbrella Academy would not be recast with the side gender female actor in the wake of his coming out. The streaming service says, so proud of our superhero, we love you, Elliot. Can't wait to see you return in season three. Wilmer Valderrama and his fiancée Amanda Pacheco announced on Instagram Money that they're expecting their first child together. Valderrama uh, showed a picture of Pacheco showing off her baby bump alongside Valderrama. Hashtag is just us three now, the couple said in their respective Instagram accounts. Joe Jonas commented on the post along with the heart emojis. Congratulations, so happy. The actor and Pacheco got engaged on New Year's Day and celebrated the first year anniversary as a couple in March. The pair were first linked together in April 2019 and attended Jonas and Sophie Turner's wedding together in June. Valderrama is best known for starring on that 70s show and NCIS. He previously dated singer Demi Lovato for six years before they called it quits in 2016. Ariana Grande is engaged to be married. The 27-year-old singer announced her engagement to her boyfriend, real estate agent Dalton Gomez, Sunday on Instagram. Grande shared the news alongside a slideshow of photos, including pictures of her cuddling up to Gomez and showing off her diamond and pearl engagement ring. She captioned the post, forever and then some. Fellow singer Demi Lovato, television personality Kim Kardashian, and model Haley Baldwin were among those to congratulate Grande in the comments. Grande and Gomez have been dating since January, according to People. The couple made their first appearance together in Grande's Stuck With You music video with Justin Bieber. Um, a source says of Grande and Gomez, they couldn't be happier. They're just so excited. It was a happy time for them. Both said of parents are thrilled. Grande voiced her love for Gomez on Instagram while celebrating his birthday in August. She wrote, happy birthday to my baby, my best friend, my favorite part of all the days. I love you. Grande was previously engaged to actor and comedian Pete Davidson, for whom she split in October 2018. Grande released her sixth studio album, Positions, in October. Her Netflix concert film, Excuse Me, I Love You, will premiere on the streaming service uh, December 23rd. Ed Sheeran released on Monday a new song title, Afterglow, along with a video of the singer performing the track. Sharon said on Instagram that Afterglow is not a new single for an upcoming album. Sharon said, hey guys, Afterglow is a song I wrote last year that I wanted to release for you. It's not the first single from the next album. It's just a song I love, and I hope you love it too. Enjoy. Um, he also added, uh, have a safe and happy festive break in New Year's. Back to dad land for me now. Ciao. In reference to how his wife, Sherry Seaborn, gave birth to the couple's first child, a baby girl named Lyra Antarctica Seaborn Sheeran in September. Sheeran teased on Instagram Sunday that he would be delivering a Christmas present. He released on YouTube an Afterglow performance video. Katy Perry is back with a new music video. The 36-year-old singer released a song, a video for her song, Not the End of the World, on Monday, starring her celebrity lookalike actress Zoe Deschanel. 
The video post run at Perry, and this Chanel's purported resemblance. In the beginning of the video, aliens accidentally adopt this Chanel instead of Perry and mistake her for the singer. This Chanel ends up saving Earth from self-destruction by unplugging the planet's internet system and pretends to be Perry. The video ends with this Chanel dressed up and performing as Perry. Not the End of the World appears on Perry's sixth studio album, Smile, released in August. The album also features the singles Daisy and Smiles. Perry released Smile just two days after giving birth to Daisy Dove, her daughter with her fiancé actor Orlando Bloom. Bloom said on the Ellen DeGeneres show in October that Daisy resembles both him and Perry. He says, the eyes do look like Perry, but it's funny because when she first came out, I was like, oh, it's me. It's a mini me. And then, fortunately, she got those Katie Blues. Perry will return to the American Idol set in October following her daughter's birth. And finally, Lizzo surprised her mom, Sherry Johnson Jefferson, with a special early Christmas gift. A 32-year-old singer shared a video Sunday on Instagram of her mom's emotional reaction to receiving a new Audi for Christmas. The video shows Johnson Jefferson walking out of the driveway and opening her eyes to see the new vehicle. She exclaims and starts to cry before giving Lizzo a big hug. Johnson Jefferson says, you see these things on television and you never expect this to happen to yourself. In the caption, Lizzo says providing for her family has been one of her longest goals. She wrote, got my mommy a brand new Audi for Christmas. I remember crying in my car when my dad passed away. No job, no money, nowhere to live. Wishing I could one day provide for my family. I couldn't do it for my dad, so I made sure I was full of mama. Happy holidays, y'all. Lizzo said in an interview with CBS This Morning in January that she was attending the University of Houston on a music scholarship when her father died in 2009. Lizzo dropped out of school after her dad's death. The star recalled, I didn't have a purpose, like I didn't feel like I had a purpose for being a musician or anything. So that turned into, oh, I can sleep on your couch. And that eventually, I got really guilt written. She said, so all I had was this car. It was a Subaru. That was my home for a, a little and I spent Thanksgiving in that car, and I remember I cried myself to sleep. Lizzo released her first album on a major label, Because I Love You, in April 2019. She signed a first-look deal with Amazon in August to develop and produce future TV projects. In an interview with Vogue in September, Lizzo discussed how she believes body positivity been commercialized in the mainstream media. She called for continued change. She says, I think now I owe it to the people who started this to not just stop here. We have to make people uncomfortable again so that we can continue to change. Change is always uncomfortable, right? And that is the Entertainment Report for Tuesday, December 22nd, 2020. I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back tomorrow to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Facebook.com slash The Entertainer Report with Ray Mello, that's R-E-Y-M-E-L-O, on Twitter at The Entertainer Report, or on Instagram at The Entertainer Report. You'll listen to this episode or any previous episodes of The Entertainer Report anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for The Entertainer Report, and it'll take you to the page. Good night, and God bless you all.